Hey, hey guys, and welcome to Pax Britannica. It's a new mod for Hearts of Iron 4 that seems pretty cool. It seems like people have enjoyed it so far and look forward to what comes of it, so I decided that I would give it a try and check it out. I don't know if I would say that Britain is incredibly powerful. They have a cute empire at least, I guess, B but it's nothing decisive. Either way, we'll start off playing as King George the fifth in 1933. So here is our faction, the Imperial Powers. We control all of Ireland still and America, which is our largest gain, but our land in India is significantly diminished. We also don't own all of Australia or any of South Africa. We do control Egypt, but they're a puppet state with much more autonomy. So maybe, maybe this is a better position than Vanilla Britain, but like I said, there will be new challenges to face today. And we can't do too much until the death of the king though, so we will wait for that before jumping into our focus tree. We have an imperial congress, kind of similar to vanilla, well I, I say similar to vanilla, but it's not going to be quite the same. That'll be in 1934 it looks like. No focuses for now though, we'll begin our interesting research. As for ideologies, we are democratic, kind of. We're led by the king, so we're obviously not as democratic, at least that's the implication here. But we are conservative. France is ruled by despotism. Then Germany, which is the United Kingdoms of Germany, <laughs> similar to, I guess, the United Kingdom, which I don't even know if it goes by the United Kingdom in this timeline. I, I like to see this alliance in Arabia too, that's fun. I guess it's not really an alliance, they're all subjugated to Hejaz. The Ottoman Empire lives on, though it is even weaker than Turkey from Vanilla, and a client state of the Russians, that's an important thing to mention. There are quite a few Russian client states on the map, led by an older and aging Tsar Nicholas. But yes, let's get to it and continue discovering the story and the secrets of this mod. Also, I should mention too that Denmark is quite the power too. They have Schleswig, Holstein, and Norway as their puppets, which is fun. It reckons back to EU4. They don't have Sweden under their boot though. There's also a civil war in Finland. There's the Russian military administration and the free Finnish army. And look who it is. It's good old Edward VIII in power a little bit sooner. We will continue waiting for London's stock market crisis and the general election. We're pretty much on an auto-scroller section here as Britain. This mod it does feel like two different mods. It feels like Fuhrreich and Red Flood if I had to. Um, say something to describe this mod. It, it really does have that red flood atmosphere, but then as Britain, I feel a lot like Fuhrreich Britain, where we're very powerful, very uninvolved in Europe, but I don't know, maybe that perception will be shattered later on. Fuhrreich also has the London stock market crisis in there too. I don't know if it's called exactly that, but it does remind me of this. And the king addressed the nation. The future of the nation, he said, is to be one of progress and modernity. He stated his firm belief in the foundations of the Imperial Confederation and reaffirmed his enthusiasm for the soon approaching Imperial Congress for king and country. And with that new political power, we have many decisions. We can't quite do any of those. We have several different decisions to do to influence all of our dominions across the world to increase increase the outlook of imperial reform, and then we have our House of Commons decisions. 
because we are very democratic. We will also recruit an agent. We'll get this guy, sure. We'll send him right across to France, who once again in this mod is our enemy. More of a classic situation between us two, unlike the historical situation or the situation in most mods. Unlike Führerreich, I should say, we seem to be openly hostile towards France. And I guess I'll quickly explain what all these other mods I'm referencing are for anybody who doesn't know or needs a reminder. Führerreich is what Germany from Kaiserreich thought would happen if Germany lost World War One. Reminder, Kaiserreich is a mod where Germany won World War One. Red Flood is a mod where World War One ended in a stalemate, but then the revolution was brewing and Germany turns red, therefore the Red Flood begins. This is a mod where the American Revolution failed and Tesla did some crazy things, I guess. Maybe? And wow, Edward having a royal marriage to a fellow noble, a princess from Prussia. Surprising, there's going to be no crisis today. I was expecting one, that's interesting. Authoritarian sympathies, I'm glad they had that represented, very true. So I guess we are friends with Prussia and Germany I'm taking. <laughs> yeah, we have a plus 100 relation with Germany and minus 100 with France and Russia. So at least it makes it obvious who our friends in the world are. First thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna rename these divisions here to the Redcoats and send them over to America just to stand around and have a good old time, maybe in Boston. Hard times are about to come upon us. We have to find some fun somehow. Us and the good people in the United Commonwealth will laugh about this very funny joke. I know there's maybe some tension brewing in America, but um, we don't need to concern ourselves with that. Also, the North America is divided in an interesting way here. We have New Orleans as its own thing here, which is weird. Their leader looks like some kid I went to high school with, which is scaring me a lot. Um, the US is the United Commonwealth, and understandably, since they weren't independent, they didn't take all of Mexico's stuff, and most of this is now just independent or anarchy. Then we have Quebec, and then we have the Northwestern Territory, which includes Seattle now, because there was no US to dispute that. I'm surprised they don't own even more territory here. And then we have New Virginia, then a nice oil company. That's fun. You gotta have a random oil company. It's nice to see a completely free confederacy of free tribes in North America, too. That's very nice. I have the Holy Order of Spain, too, which sounds like a great Spanish state. Probably prime to start an inquisition, if I had to guess. Britain owns quite a bit everywhere too. They, they own even more islands. They own France's territory besides Morocco, which is now independent and probably pretty subject to British influence, if I had to guess. And the Great Balkan War, a land united in fire. Not surprising that something's happening here, but the nations that are involved is interesting. Romania and Serbia fighting Croatia and Hungary. We will see what happens. I guess not too surprising, honestly, that those two nations would go to war with the other two nations, but uh, either way, it's not the usual players. I maybe am too used to the Great War mod and the historical wars that started there leading up to World War I, but it's weird to see Bulgaria just sitting on the side, letting all this happen without taking anything for themselves. We also have Constantinople, which I'm surprised to see isn't called Sargrad, but I, I guess realistically they probably wouldn't have changed the name if they took it over in the 20th century. Oh, uh, never mind, I had such good words for Spain, but now they've joined the French and they have become our enemy. Also, the stock market crash has begun. We are now in the position of America from vanilla or England in Führerreich. It'll be fun to see how we navigate this crisis. Even with it, we are 
still very powerful. We also have an uprising in China a little later than you would expect. And one of our puppets might get overthrown. I don't think we can do anything to help them though, so we will just watch. Or wait, no, we can we can join the war. <laughs> okay. And at long last, the game is going to let us choose a focus of our own. No more auto-scroller for now. And nice, as fast as that, we already have the National Recovery Act, so maybe this isn't as bad as the Great Depression from Vanilla, which plagues the US until 1940-ish. Also, our control in Ireland is falling apart. Um, I think we, can we join this war too? N no, this, this one seems to be working and we can't join it. Oh, I maybe can get past the system though by calling them into our war and then maybe they will let us join their war. Yeah. Or no, it's it's not working. <laughs> Never mind. Also, I, I forgot to mention, but the American capital is of course Philadelphia, which is great. Everybody loves Philadelphia. So we have three options for Ireland since our Irish Commonwealth came out on top in that civil war. The Commonwealth can be maintained, everything can be normal. We can integrate Ulster but retain the Commonwealth, so create a somewhat vanilla-like situation except Ireland's still our puppet. Or Ireland can be fully reintegrated into the United Kingdom, which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> They're now back, 100%. And riots across America, we're lucky we sent those redcoats to Boston in case any trouble starts. I'm sure it's Texas riling everybody up, or Tejas as I should say. Also, it's fun seeing the divine kingdom of Portugal owning Galicia here. That's a fun sight. You know, we'll have an interesting Portugal situation. I can't wait for content to unfold there between the divine kingdom of Portugal, the Portuguese kingdom in exile, maybe Brazil will play a part in the dynamic. Also, it's very cute seeing at least in independent Wallonia, even though um, the Netherlands still owns most of Belgium. We at least have Wallonia. Also, Switzerland is just called the Swiss Confederation. Fun change. Ah, and baby Michael the first is destroying Hungary. Ah, it's brutal. Yeah, Croatia, it appears, has pieced out of the conflict and left Hungary to die a uh, long slow death. And here we are, it's time for a great imperial conference. We will of course push our agenda that the dominions should more strictly follow the mandates of the crown. It might take a little bit of convincing, but we'll do our best to make everyone love our agenda more than anything else. We're also going to do a quick imperial conquest down here in Arabia. And good, Italy, now that they're finished with their civil war, has requested to join the Imperial Powers. I assume Germany may follow suit. And oh, wow, we have a negative 14% poverty rate. <laughs> That's amazing. And China is now called the United States of China. So I'm going to use this as my opportunity to call China the United States and confuse everybody for the rest of every Pax Britannia video I make. And yeah, the United States is now continuing to consolidate some of its territory lost in the West here. It seems like they're taking it all, so we're going to have big US today. Um, we have combat amalgamates and enhanced humans. I, I don't know if anything's quite worth it yet. I guess we kind of need to use the amalgamates because that's then like the purpose of the mod, but I kind of just need planes right now. Also Churchill's in India. Hmm. Reminds me of... Uh, oh, and Bulgaria is gone now. Yeah, they, they should have got involved in that war when they could have because now they don't exist. It's all Yugoslavia, always has been. The US is finishing up the wars for their territory and they unfortunately won't quite be able to take Manchuria and 
Qingdao, and our very British Nicaragua Canal is complete, so we get minus 3% consumer goods. Here it is in all of its glory. We'll now start producing some primordial forms. We have plenty of infantry equipment and infantry rations, so we can really dial down the production of those. And I can't wait to develop the Teleforce engine. That's going to be fun. We just have to research all the other planes first, and then we can start building those. And I should have mentioned earlier, we have the very cute, glorious, I guess I should say, Grand Columbia. You love to see it. And France has walked into Brest and claimed it as their own. How preposterous, scandalous. They will pay for what they've done. I should mention too, we have this cool mechanic where we can have a focus for our state, similar to EU4. Like here in Sussex, we have the Industrial Investments modifier active. I've also made this great combat amalgamate division. I'm sure it will fare well on the battlefield. I don't know what it is. I don't know how we control them, but I'm sure it'll It'll be great, it'll scare the enemy away. Oh, now that I look at this better, I think this is our progress towards increasing these, so... It might be a bad thing that we're negative 14% on poverty rate. That may mean that we're negative 14% the way to increasing the level of dealing with poverty. Yeah, that might not be so good now that I think about it, but I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. And the guys back in London having a jolly time decided to make some new random borders in Africa. Classic. I'm sure it'll work out great. And France, spicing things up invading Wallonia. Not surprising, but it's not good for us. We should have guaranteed them. Only if we could guarantee people. And we're going to support Winston Churchill. And with that, we are going to leave it off there. This is a great mod. It's very cool. I like the steampunk aspect, even though that doesn't seem to play too much into the political stuff, at least from Britain's perspective right now, but that could all change later on. If this video gets a thousand likes, I'll take that as a sign that you guys want to see more, and I will make a second part of this, maybe even play some of the other countries, and by some of the other, I mean either France or Germany. We'll see. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.